Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. Every night a terrifying creature crawls out of a black hole at the bottom of the sea and hunts people on a desert island. Today we will recap the 2019 movie Sweetheart. After a yacht crashes during a storm, a girl named Jennifer Reming is washed ashore on a small tropical island. The girl spits out water and tries to catch her breath. After she comes to her senses, she notices the body of her friend Brad, who was also swept to the island by the current. After the boat crashed, their life jackets helped them stay afloat. Jennifer runs to help the boy, but discovers that he is seriously wounded in the stomach by a coral. In desperation, Jennifer tries to call for help and shout to the rest of the group, but no one answers. Realizing there's no help in sight, Jennifer pulls Brad out of the water. The guy wakes up and starts coughing. Then the girl pulls the coral out of Brad's belly on her own. The guy screams in sudden pain and tries to warn his girlfriend about something, but he doesn't have enough strength to speak. Jennifer runs deep into the island to get some water for her wounded friend. After finding a coconut on the ground, she easily splits it open with a stone. Jennifer then carefully carries the coconut to Brad and pours the life-giving liquid into his open mouth. However, the guy is unable to survive his wounds, so the heroine is left on the desert island all alone. Having come to terms with her plight, the girl decides to explore the island. Jennifer discovers an abandoned camp of other survivors in the jungle. After reading the date on some psychotropic pills she finds, she realizes that her predecessors lived here back in the 90s. Exploring the camp, she stumbles upon items useless for survival on a desert island. A mini-fridge with expired soda, a thermos, a gamepad, a stuffed toy and a book. Fortunately, the girl soon finds a tarp and a box of matches among the items, which gives her some hope. Suddenly, Jennifer hears a strange sound behind her. It comes from the trunk of a hollow fallen tree. Luckily for the heroine, the noise was made by a small bird, not a monster. Back on shore, Jennifer covers her friend's breathless body with palm leaves and prepares for dusk. She looks around once more for help, but there are only the beautiful vistas of a tropical island and not a soul around her. At night, a downpour hits the tropical island. The girl uses every available container to fill it with rainwater. She herself spends the night under a palm tree, shivering from the cold. In the morning, the tide brings a lot of fish ashore. Jennifer decides that now is not the time to be squeamish and packs provisions in her bag. Among the other fish, the girl discovers the body of a shark with horrific lacerations. Jennifer looks out at the ocean, fearful of what might be lurking beneath the water. Later, she uses the tools at hand to carve the fish, overcoming an episode of nausea. After eating breakfast, the girl decides to indulge her memories. She retrieves her personal diary from her surviving backpack, but all her notes have been diluted by the water. Among the pages of the diary, she finds a picture of her and her boyfriend together from the day of a Halloween celebration. The girl looks with tears in her eyes at the endless ocean, where the storm separated her from her beloved. Apparently Jennifer's boyfriend remained on the sunken yacht. During another sweep around the island, Jennifer discovers the burial of a family of three who lived there long before she did. Looking at them, the girl figures out that Brad would also be better off resting underground and decides to take care of her departed friend. Jennifer drags Brad's body away from the water and buries it in the sand at a depth of 20 centimeters at most. After that Jennifer places a stick with his initials on the grave. In the evening, the girl arranges her lodging and cooks a fish dinner over the fire. So another day passes on the desert island. On the next day, Jennifer wanders along the shore of the island. Suddenly, the girl is horrified to find a red trail leading to the ocean and Brad's open grave. Something has dug up the guy's body and mauled him just like the shark from the previous day. Sensing a threat to her own life, Jennifer decides to build a weapon for protection. She uses a sharp stone to carve herself a wooden spear. In the evening, Jennifer builds a fire and, armed with her homemade spear, settles against the jungle. At night, the girl suddenly wakes up and gazes into the darkness. Despite her fears, the predator never attempts to attack her, and the girl manages to fall asleep. On the following day, Jennifer takes a stroll in the shallow waters, notices floating objects just off the shore and goes for a swim for them. The floating objects are the girl's luggage that she took with her on her boat trip. While swimming, the girl dives in, notices a huge ominous black hole at the bottom of the ocean, and decides to hurry back to the island. She finds nothing useful in the suitcase other than spare clothes and shoes. Another evening approaches, and the girl decides to open the box of the previous inhabitants of the island and count the matches, of which there are not many left. In the box, Jennifer discovers a stash of photographs, but she is suddenly distracted by the sounds of an approaching plane. The excited girl tries to launch a flare found among the things on the island into the sky, but it only fires on her third attempt. The plane flies away and the water surface lights up brightly, revealing to Jennifer a terrifying sight. A giant sea monster on two legs emerges from the ocean and looks in her direction. The frightened girl jumps out of her seat and hides in the jungle. She hears the monster's eerie breathing and approaching footsteps, but she miraculously manages to remain unnoticed and survive the night. In the morning the girl runs to the shore with a spear in her hands, but the monster is already gone. 
Then Jennifer goes back to look at the family photos from the box and notices in one of them the eyes of the sea monster glinting in the darkness. Jennifer doesn't want to become food for the monster, so she decides to make a raft out of a suitcase and two life jackets. After that, the girl decides to test the homemade raft in practice. But the suitcase keeps turning over, and Jennifer realizes that she won't be able to keep it afloat for long. The girl loses her temper and gives up on the idea, throwing the remains of the raft ashore in despair. Instead, Jennifer finds shelter for the night in a tree trunk. As darkness falls, the sea monster once again ventures out to hunt from the depths of the ocean. Staying in her shelter, the girl hears the monster's roar and approaching footsteps. Jennifer tries not to make a sound, lest the monster notice her. However, it smells Jennifer and begins to shake the tree in which she is hiding. The girl cries out in fear and covers her head with her hands. The creature never manages to get its potential prey out and goes back into the ocean. It is the fifth day of Jennifer's stay on the desert island. The girl gets out of her hiding place and devises a cunning plan to survive another night with the sea monster. She catches small fish in the water with her hands, and after that crushes them into small pieces to use as bait for larger fish. In this way, Jennifer manages to lure a small shark to shore and stab her with a spear. Overjoyed, she hangs her prey on a rope and takes up an observation position from her hiding place. At night, the girl falls asleep and misses the monster's appearance. However, Jennifer's plan works, and the sea monster eats the shark instead of her. As Jennifer prepares for the next night, the waves dump the mangled and severed in half body of another of her yacht friends, Zack, onto the shore. Without further ado, she removes the guy's life jacket and hangs Zack from a tree as new bait for the sea monster. Tonight, Jennifer doesn't have to catch a shark to keep herself safe. Night falls. Jennifer watches Zack's lifeless body without shutting her eyes, waiting for the monster to appear. But this time the sea creature comes too close to Jennifer's shelter, and she can hardly contain the scream of terror stuck in her throat. The girl is lucky again, and the monster does not detect her. On the seventh day, Jennifer decides to change shelter and builds herself a hammock in the treetops, using old rags and ropes of her predecessors who tried to survive on the island. In the evening, it starts raining again, and the girl is frightened by every sound. Suddenly she notices the monster wandering in the jungle and she tries to blend with the hammock. The sea monster's ominous breath grows closer, as does the stomping of its feet. He finally discovers his prey and begins to shake the hammock, causing one of the bindings to tear and the girl to fall to the ground. Grabbing her spear, Jennifer runs out to the shore of the ocean and desperately tries to escape the monster. The creature leaps into the water, where it continues to pursue its victim at breakneck speed as it runs along the shore. Suddenly the huge sea creature jumps out of the water right in front of Jennifer, but she manages to pierce it with a sharpened stake. The enraged monster throws the girl aside and disappears into the ocean, leaving behind a trail of black liquid on the sand. After that, the exhausted Jennifer climbs back into the trees and miraculously survives another terrible night. In the morning, the girl goes down to the shore and washes her wounds from her fight with the monster. Then Jennifer changes her clothes and is surprised to see an inflatable raft with a tent slowly approaching the island on the horizon. Not believing her eyes, she swims towards the raft and finds two other survivors of the shipwreck inside, her boyfriend Lucas Griffin and her friend Mia Reed. Upon reaching the shore, Jennifer can't believe her luck and immediately throws herself into the arms of her boyfriend. Lucas assures her that everything will be okay now. After a while, the girl cooks breakfast for Lucas and Mia and treats them to a soda from 20 years ago. They admire the beauty of the island, but Jennifer warns them of the danger that lurks beneath the water. Lucas asks the girl to calm down and calls her a sweetheart. She tells her friends about the sea monster and the black hole at the bottom of the ocean where it pulls its victims. Seeing that the people closest to her don't believe her, Jennifer tells her friends about Zack, whose mangled body was eaten by the monster. At the mention of her friend's name, Lucas and Mia look at each other shamefully. Jennifer goes on to colorfully describe all the horror that has been happening to her all these days and shows a picture of the passed away family that shows the glowing eyes of the monster. Despite all her arguments, Lucas and Mia remain skeptical. Though Mia believes there are graves on the island of the family who used to live here, she wonders who buried them here. They suggest that Jennifer should calm down and wait for Brad or anyone else to come ashore. After all, the current carries everyone to this very island. Jennifer tells Mia that Brad, who was her boyfriend, did not survive the boat wreck, and the monster dragged his body underwater as well. Mia walks away from her friends in tears, trying to comprehend her loss. After some time, the friends are alone on the beach. Mia stares blankly at the calm surface of the water and tells her friend how scared she was to be in the middle of the vast ocean. She counted each of her days as her last, thinking and going crazy from the silence on the raft. Jennifer is sure it's better to take their chances on the raft in the ocean than to end up here eaten by the monster. But her friend doesn't agree with that. Lucas, too, has had a hard time surviving the last few days and is in no hurry to return to the water. However, Jennifer intends to leave the island before dark. She suggests sailing west, because that is the direction the planes fly, therefore, there may be people living there. 
After that she asks the young man to give her a pocket knife in order to get as much food as possible before she leaves. Upon opening the knife, the girl finds traces of red liquid on it. She realizes that something terrible has happened on the raft, and Lucas and Mia are hiding the truth from her. After single-handedly gathering food for the week, Jennifer returns to her friends, who are awkwardly treading on the scene. They inform her that they are too exhausted to go swimming again. They think that whatever scary monster lives on the island, floating on a raft in the open ocean is much more dangerous. Instead, they suggest building a fire on the shore and waiting for the planes to show up. But Jennifer stands her ground. She tries to convince her friends to get into the lifeboat and escape before dark. But Lucas snaps at her and refuses to go. Receiving no support from her closest friends, the girl goes for a swim. While in the water, she comes up with a cunning new plan. After waiting for her boyfriend and Mia to let their guard down, Jennifer places the prepared provisions in a container, and then launches the inflatable raft into the water and makes a daring attempt to escape without the two of them. The pair notice this and begin to pursue the girl. Jennifer tries to get away from them and pushes Mia away from her several times using her feet. Eventually Lucas manages to throw his girlfriend off the raft, and Mia immobilizes her by hitting her in the head with an oar. Jennifer regains consciousness when it is already dark around her. She has been tied to a tree to prevent her from making another attempt to escape. Mia informs her that the island is safe and they have not encountered any monsters since darkness has fallen. Mia apologizes to her friend for hitting her with the paddle, but Jennifer won't listen to anything and asks to be untied. Mia still refuses to believe her friend's stories about the sea monster, as Jennifer has often deceived people close to her before and lost their trust long ago. After a round of the jungle, Lucas returns to the friends. He assures them that he has not encountered any monster there, but Jennifer is unnerved and once again says that the monster appears out of the water, not out of the jungle. Mia decides to leave the couple alone and goes for a walk along the shore. She is horrified to find the mangled remains of a fish in the sand. A conversation ensues between Lucas and Jennifer in which the guy first tries to comfort his girlfriend, and then decides to tell her everything he thinks about her. While he was having a great time on the yacht with his best friends, Jennifer wasn't happy at all. He thinks the girl brings him nothing but unhappiness and wants to ruin everything again by deciding to leave the safe island. Jennifer once again tries to appeal to the guy's mind and asks him to set her free, but Lucas refuses to do so. He tries to humiliate the girl and reminds her that he fully provides for her. The guy is convinced that even if she manages to leave the island alone without his help she will become destitute and of no use to anyone. Lucas then reproaches Jennifer for wanting to flee the island, leaving him with no food and no hope of rescue. The girl explains that there is plenty of food on the island, and the only person to fear is the bloodthirsty monster. After listening to all of Lucas' insults, Jennifer decides to find out from him what really happened to Zack on the raft. Before he can answer the awkward question, there is a desperate cry from Mia, who has been attacked by the monster. Lucas grabs a torch and rushes to the girl's aid, leaving Jennifer tied to the tree. Upon reaching the spot, the guy encounters the sea monster, which has already begun to dine on Mia. Lucas hits the monster with a burning torch, but it easily pushes the opponent away from him in return. Jennifer barely manages to free herself from the restraints and rushes to her friend's aid, but it's too late. The monster grabs Mia and drags her under the water. Lucas watches her in horror, but can do nothing to help. As Jennifer arrives, she grabs the shocked Lucas and leads him deep into the jungle, where they wait out the night. It is the ninth day on the island. Lucas hesitates to climb down from the tree for fear that the monster may be waiting for them below. The girl assures the boy that the sea monster never appeared on the shore during the day. The guy is having a hard time with the events of last night and blames himself for Mia's disappearance. To distract Lucas from his sad thoughts, Jennifer asks for help to pack her things and provisions so that they can finally escape from the cursed island. The girl catches some fish with a spear and spends her last matches cooking and decides to take one more walk to the camp before leaving. In order to collect all necessary items, she then picks up the container of expired pills again and clutches it thoughtfully, listening to the silence of the island. Eventually, she and Lucas load their belongings onto the raft and launch it into the water. Once inside, Jennifer discovers that everything inside is flooded with red liquid, presumably Zach's. The girl looks apprehensively at her boyfriend, but is hesitant to find out the truth. The guy uses his oar to row away from the shore, and they begin to move west, where they can be detected by passing planes. But then Lucas notices some movement under the water. Moments later, the sea monster jumps out and attacks him. Lucas and Jennifer barricade themselves inside the raft, but the monster keeps attacking it from all sides. They are very frightened, for they were fully convinced that the monster only appears at night. The sea monster breaks through the bottom of the raft and tries to grab Jennifer, but she pushes it away from her with her feet. Lucas fires his signal pistol several times at the monster's head and pushes it into the water with his spear. Water begins to enter through the hole in the bottom of the raft. There is a brief silence, after which the sea monster drags Jennifer under the water. In daylight, the creature looks like a giant hybrid of a shark and a humanoid. 
it slowly drags Jennifer toward the black hole at the bottom of the ocean, but the girl, overcoming her terror, remembers the pocket knife. Jennifer wounds the monster with it and it swims away from her, bleeding black fluid. Suddenly the sea monster's attention is drawn to Lucas, who dives under the water to save his girlfriend. The monster instantly swims up to the guy and grabs him. Lucas tries to defend himself with his spear, but the monster drags him into the black hole unhindered. Jennifer fails to do anything to help. She dives out of the water and screams in despair. She has no choice but to go back to the island to which the torn raft is stranded. The girl struggles to make a flame and leaves one last entry in her diary. In it, she recounts what happened on the island and shares her experiences with the monster. She hopes that the entry will help all the shipwrecked people who may be thrown ashore after her if she cannot deal with the creature. Left all alone, Jennifer decides to confront the sea monster and begins preparing for the final battle. She sharpens tree branches and digs up bones from the graves to make sharper weapons. At night, the monster comes out to hunt again. Jennifer lures it into a circle of dry twigs and grass, then sets it on fire. The monster looks around confusedly, trying to find a way out of the trap. Seizing the moment, the girl runs out from behind cover and strikes it first with her spear. She grabs some more sharpened branches and tries to attack the monster again, but it tosses the girl away. Jennifer doesn't give up and continues to attack the monster, desperately trying to put as many spears into its recent wound as she can. The monster defends itself against the girl's attacks, inflicting serious injuries on her in return. After a fierce confrontation, the girl tries to crawl to her weapon, but the monster grabs her. With a huge paw it squeezes Jennifer's head, intending to crush her skull. Despite the hopelessness of the situation, the girl manages to pull out a small stake and she pierces the sea monster's chest several times with it. They are both badly injured, but the monster continues to pursue Jennifer to the shoreline. The girl stops, ready to strike the monster again, but it collapses exhausted from its wounds. The girl destroys the monster by piercing it with her spear, then beheads its breathless body. The dreadful night changes to dawn. Jennifer limps toward the raft, carrying the monster's head as proof of what happened to the pretty girl on that cursed island. So what did you think of this movie? Why do you think such a ruthless monster gave the girl the opportunity to slip away from him several times? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.